I want to say that um, I have been to places where the Holy Spirit works very powerfully. I have been to places where the Holy Spirit does not work as powerfully. Nimekuwa kwenye sehemu ambazo Roho Mtakatifu anafanya kazi kwa nguvu sana na pia nimekuwa kwenye maeneo mengine ambapo Roho Mtakatifu hafanyi kazi kabisa. And I think the difference is in the people. Na nafikiria utofauti umo ndani ya watu. The Holy Spirit always wants to work powerfully. Roho Mtakatifu kila wakati yuataka kufanya kazi kwa nguvu. And uh, let me describe some of the incidents that when I led the meetings and how powerful the Holy Spirit was. Wacha nieleze kuna matukio yaliyokuwa yanatokea wakati nilipokuwa nikiongoza watu kuzama katika Roho Mtakatifu. Now, we had groups of people that we love God together, worship God together. Kuna vikundi vya watu ambavyo huu watu na wapenda Mungu pamoja na tunaabudu Mungu pamoja. And then a number of people was filled with the joy of the Lord. Na sasa unapata wengi wanajazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. They could not stop laughing. Hawange koma ama hawange acha kuendelea kuuna upendo. They were filled with joy, wao wanajazwa na upendo and love na furaha and Burdens go away. Na wanasikia mizigo imeondolewa. Evil spirit go away. Mapepo inatoweka. And uh, I have meetings that when I touch people, there could be, you know, many people who fell down right away under the power of God. Na kuna mikutano mingi ambazo mimi nimekuwa nikiguza watu mikono na wanaanguka chini na wanajazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. And they were greatly touched by God. Na kwa kweli walikuwa wanajazwa vikubwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Now to me speaking in tongue is one of the signs of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Kwangu kuongea katika ndimi ni ishara ya kuonyesha kwamba mtu huyu amejazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu. But what I see is that it's not necessarily always speaking in tongue. It's speaking in tongue is one of the signs. Lakini kile nasema kwamba sio lazima mtu akijazwa na Roho Mtakatifu lazima anene kwenye ndimi. For many people they could experience joy and freedom. Watu wengine sasa wataisi kwamba wako uhuru na pia wako na furaha or demons go away ama mapepo inaondolewa and a life transformed na maisha yanabadilishwa now all this are the work of the holy spirit mambo haya yote ni kazi ya roho mtakatifu now in the book of acts the two instances other than book you know book acts chapter 2 that the people were speaking other languages na sasa katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume mbili kunaonyesha vile watu walivyokuwa kiongea katika ndimi and then there were two cases one was peter and john praying for the people in samaria and they spoke in tongues na sasa pia kuna sehemu nyingine ambapo petero na yohana walipokuwa wakiombea watu katika mji wa samaria na watu wakaongea katika ndimi and then paul went to ephesus also a number of people spoke in town. Na pia Paulo alipoenda katika Uyafeso, watu wengi waliongea katika ndimi. That is a historical fact. Kwa hivyo hii hayo ni matukio ya kihistoria. But does it mean that every time when people feel the Holy Spirit they have to speak in tongues? Kwa hivyo hiyo haimaanishi kwamba kila wakati unapojazwa na Roho Mtakatifu lazima unene katika ndimi. Ah ah. No, that is one of the signs. Lakini hiyo ni mojawapo ya ishara ya kuonyesha kwamba mtu huyu amejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. It doesn't have to be the only sign or the first sign. Na isikuwe kwamba ndiyo ishara ya kwanza ama ya kipekee. But the main thing is some of these people they experience the joy or the love of God so powerfully their life was changed instantly. Ishara nyingine yaweza kuwa ni kwamba mtu yuaweza kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu na akububujikwe na furaha ya Roho Mtakatifu. I described to you one time I was praying for one woman in a meeting. Na niliwaelezeni kwamba kuna siku niliyokuwa nikiombea mama mmoja kwenye mkutano. She was first filled with the joy of the Lord and she was laughing very loudly. Na yeye alipojazwa na Roho Mtakatifu akaanza kucheka kwa sauti. And then later she started to cry. Na sasa tena akaanza kulia. And then she started to laugh again. Tena akaanza kucheka and cry again. Na kalia tena. This kept going for a number of times. Sasa ikaendelea hivyo katika muda mchache. And I asked her what happened. Nikamuuliza ni nini limetendeka? She said she was filled with great joy from the Lord. Akasema nilisikia nimejazwa na furaha kuu ya Mungu. And then she was repentant of her sins. Na sasa alipokuwa akianza kutubu dhambi zake. And then she cried. Na akaanza kulia. And when she cried she was filled with Joy of the Lord again. Na alipolia tena kajazwa na roho na furaha ya Mungu. So the Holy Spirit really came powerfully upon her. 
Kwa hivyo Roho Mtakatifu alimjaza kwa kiwango cha juu. I have the experience of one time even praying in a hospital. Nishapitia matukio haya ninapoomba katika hospitali. I pray for someone and she was first filled with the joy of the Lord. Na ninaombea mtu na anapojazwa na roho na roho wa Bwana in a public area katika mahali pa pa uma. she was the only person i was praying for at that moment alikuwa ni mtu niliyekuwa nikimwombea wakati huo peke yake she was with joy <laughs> na kajaza roho mtakatifu na kaanza kucheka kacheka kabisa and then she cried for a long long time na sasa akalia kwa muda mrefu and then later she said because since her childhood she has been hurt by many people na sasa akasema kwamba wakati ya taangia alipokuwa mtoto alikuwa amejeruhiwa na watu wengi so that experience bring joy to her na sasa yale matukio yakaleta furaha kwake and the sadness came out na sasa machungu pia yakatokelezea and her life was totally changed na sasa maisha yake yakabadilika kabisa and now she is a missionary na sasa yeye ni missionary i have brought people to be transformed by the holy spirit and they become preachers missionaries nimewalea watu nimewaguza watu na wamekuwa missionary na wamekuwa wachungaji now to me the key is very important that we believe in god's love na kwangu mimi nalo kusema kwamba ni kuamini tu katika upendo wa kristo yesu that God is loving us. Ya kwamba Mungu anatupenda. God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Mungu anataka kutujaza na Roho Mtakatifu. He's right here. Ako hapa na sisi. So we believe in God. Kwa hivyo tunamwamini. And we love God. Tunampenda Mungu. And we hunger for God. Na tunakuwa na njaa ya Mungu. And then we cry out to God. Na sasa tunamlilia from Mungu. our spirit. Kutoka ndani ya roho zetu. Now I find that the most effective way is not just shouting. Na utapata kwamba njia mzuri sio ile njia ya kupiga kelele. Some people think shouting loudly will bring the work of the Holy Spirit. Watu wengine hufikiria kwamba wanapoita kwa sauti kuu ndipo watafanya Roho Mtakatifu aje. Many many times when I pray for people, I was praying very gently. Wakati mwingi ninapoombea watu na waombea kwa njia ya upole. But I let people see the love of God. Lakini naacha watu waone upendo wa Mungu. And they enjoy the love of God. Na wakasherekea upendo wa Mungu. And they love God with all their heart. Na wampende Mungu kwa roho yao yote. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and reach out the heart reach out to God. Sasa wanamwendea Mungu kwa namfikia Mungu. Hallelujah. And that people's life will change. Na sasa maisha ya watu inabadilishwa. So what I want to say don't look for certain manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Kile nasema kwamba wacha kutafuta vijisababu ndio useme kwamba huyu mtu amejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Believe that God really wants to have a close relationship with us. Wewe amini kwamba Mungu anataka uwe na uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. Believe that it's not hard. Kuamini hilo jambo sio ngumu. And every day spend long time praying to God. Na kila wakati chukua muda wako mwingi kumuomba Mungu. You, you can keep saying, you know, declare the grace of God. Unaweza endelea tu ukitamka neema ya Mungu. God is loving me. Mungu ananipenda. I really believe that. Na hilo ninaliamini. God is blessing me. Mungu anibariki. God is with me. Mungu ako na mimi. And I love God. Na ninampenda Mungu. I need God. Ninamhitaji Mungu. I want God. Namtaka Mungu. And God is here. Mungu wangu yuko hapa. And then you relax. Na unatulia. And you feel the power upon you. Unasikia nguvu zikiwa kwa Becoming stronger and stronger. Inaendelea kuwa ya nguvu kabisa kabisa. Unaendelea kumabudu Mungu. And then the Holy Spirit every day when you get used to it. He will come more and more powerful. Na sasa utakapozoea kufanya hivyo, Roho Mtakatifu atakujaza sana sana. We don't have to think of certain manifestation. Tusifikirie kwamba ni lazima kitu fulani kifanyike. If we do, sometimes we'll get disappointed. Kama basi itabidi lazima tungoje mtu aongee katika ndimi na tuseme Roho wa Bwana ameshuka hapo tutakasirishwa. But believe that God is right here. Lakini yamini kwamba Mungu wako hapa. God is blessing us. Mungu anatubariki. When someone wants to follow God, mtu akitaka kumfuata Mungu, God is very happy. Mungu ana furaha. That faith is very important. Imani ni kitu cha muhimu sana. Faith is what God promises I believe. Imani ni kwamba kila chochote ambacho Mungu ametuahidi tunaamini. He promised to be with me, I believe it. Aliahidi kuwa na sisi tunaamini. He promised to be blessing us, I believe it. Alituahidi kwamba atatubariki unaamini kwalo. Okay? And another thing very important is to have people love God from the bottom of the heart for a long time. Jambo la muhimu ni watu kumpenda Mungu kutoka kwenye kitovu cha moyo wako kwa muda mrefu. It's not just shouting. 
sio tu kupiga kelele shouting can help kupiga kelele kuna nasaidia and is very important is from the bottom of the heart lakini la muhimu ni kutoka kwenye kilindi cha roho yako now people could be shouting like this hallelujah 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 wanaweza kuwa kupiga kelele wakisema hallelujah 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 and nothing may happen na hakuna chochote labda kitatendeka. Very they say Lord you are loving me now. Lakini mtu anaweza sema oh Mungu alipenda leo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now when I do that for first as a leader we need to have that close relationship. Na sasa wewe kama kiongozi ni lazima uwe na ule uhusiano wa karibu. Any time we pray wakati wote unapoomba we can enter the strong presence of God. Tunaweza ingia katika uwepo wa Mungu zaidi. And then we lead the people to do the same. Na sasa basi tutaelekeza watu wengine kufanya vivyo hivyo. And then you see more and more of the work of the Holy Spirit. Na sasa utaona kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu nyingi na nyingi. Also the work of the Holy Spirit is for blessing people for great commission. Kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu basi ni ile kubariki watu pia. For preaching the gospel and for building up the spiritual life of people. Kwa kuhubiri injili na kujenga maisha ya watu ya kiroho. When people just want to experience the Holy Spirit they will stop there. And they would stop if they just want experience. Aha, kama basi watu watasema lazima wawe na ule kule kuonekana kwa Roho Mtakatifu watu wengine watagwamia njiani. When we have compassion on people, God will work. Lakini kama tuko na upendo kati yetu basi Mungu yuwafanya kazi. We want to bring people to Jesus. Tunataka tuwalete watu kwa Kristo Yesu. We want to raise up the spiritual life. Tunataka tuinue maisha ya kiroho. God will work. Mungu afanye kazi. Let me share with you this year when I went to South Africa. Washeni niwaambie hii hadithi fupi nilipoenda kule Afrika Kusini. Before I went there on Tuesday, I flew to South Africa on a Tuesday. Siku ya Jumanne nilipanda ndege yangu ya kwenda kule Afrika Kusini. And there was one woman in that church. Na katika lile kanisa nilokuwa nikienda kulikuwa na mke mmoja, mwanamke mmoja. In that early morning, very early midnight She had a dream. Na sasa wakati alipokuwa amelala akakuwa na ndoto. Some people were chasing after her and trying to hurt her. Watu wengine walikuwa wakimkimbiza wakitaka kumjeruhi. She was very afraid. Na alikuwa ameogopa na uoga. And then she went to a house. Na akaenda katika nyumba. And looked inside and saw a Chinese boy. Na sasa alipoingia katika ile nyumba akaona mtoto wa Kichina. He knocked the window and asked the boy to let her in. Akabisha mlango na dirisha akamuuliza yule kijana amruhusu aingie. And then she went and she saw a group of Chinese praying. Na alipoingia katika ile nyumba akaona kikundi cha wachina wakiomba. And then she saw me come up. Na akaona mchungaji akitokelezea. And I said to her, "Do you want me to pray for you?" Na akamuuliza, "Je, wataka nikuombe?" The moment I touched her, na alipotumguza, she was filled with joy and full with the love of God. Na akajazwa na upendo na furaha ya Mungu. And she kept laughing, na akaanza kucheka. And she woke up from the dream, na akatoka kwenye usingizi. And she was still laughing, na alikuwa anaendelea kucheka. And on the same day I flew there, na sasa ile siku alipoingia kule, and she concluded that she saw me in a dream. Na sasa akasema kwamba amemuona huyu katika ndoto. Because it looked like me in a dream. Manake ilionekana kama yeye katika ndoto. Second, when I pray for her, she experienced the same thing, the joy and the love when I pray for her in person later when I went there. Sasa wakati alipomuombea, ikafanyika vile alivyomuona katika ndoto akajazwa na roho na upendo wa Mungu. And then also the teaching was also about the love and the joy of the Lord. And it agrees with what she saw in a dream. Na sasa hata mafundisho pia ilikuwa yanalenga kuhusu upendo wa Mungu na furaha ya Mungu vile ilivyokuwa katika ndoto. So she concluded that she did see me in a dream. Na sasa akamalizia akasema kwamba kwa kweli alimuona katika ndoto. Let me tell you this is a sixth person who never saw me but saw me in a dream. Wasana niwaambie huyu ni mtu wa sita aliyeniona katika ndoto kabla kuniona mimi. There were other people who saw me before saw me in a dream before they saw me in person. Kuna watu wengi ambao wameniona katika ndoto na hawajaniona kibinafsi. What I want to say is if you really follow God and love God and believe in God kile nataka kusema ni kwamba kama utampenda Mungu na ukamwamini au ufuate you just want to do what God wants you to do. Yaani unafanya tu kile ambacho Mungu anataka wewe ufanye. And you love God all the time. Na unampenda Mungu kila wakati. God knows it. Mungu anajua and he will bless you na atakubariki 
and he will also bless your members na atabariki hata washirika wa kanisa lako so first we need to have this close relationship na kwanza wewe kama kiongozi lazima uwe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu Now for me in some cases I see people I saw people experience the Holy Spirit very powerfully Mimi basi kibinafsi nimeona watu wengi wakijaza na Roho Mtakatifu kwa mpigo kubwa In other cases I saw that people were not experiencing the Holy Spirit powerfully Na pia kuna matukio fulani ambayo nimeona watu hawamuhisi Roho Mtakatifu kwa mpigo kubwa I'm not bothered by that Na mimi sijakasirishwa na hilo I just do my job Mimi ninafanya kazi yangu I don't compare Mimi huanga sifananishi and I hope that you will say okay it doesn't matter. Na pia nataka kuamini pia wewe utasema hivyo hautafananisha kwa nini yule akajaza na Roho Mtakatifu akaongea kwa ndimi na huyu hajaongea kwa ndimi. We keep teaching the people to trust in God's love. Tunaendelea kufundisha watu waendelee kuishi katika upendo wa Mungu. And guiding the people to pray to God a lot. Na kuelekeza watu ili wazidi kumuomba Mungu. And also pray for people to bless the people outside na pia kuombea watu ili nao waende kule nje waombee watu god will bless you mungu atakubariki and more and more people will experience the holy spirit na watu wengi watahisi roho mtakatifu now have i answered your question amekusaidia mzee yeah amekusaidia sana okay and i can pray for you too you know afterwards after the teaching so you know i'm happy to help anyone to experience the holy spirit more powerfully even though you have experienced the holy spirit powerfully before baada ya mafundisho haya mzee pia ningelipenda kukuombea na pia ningelipenda kusaidia mtu yule yote ambaye angelipenda kuhisi roho kuhisi amejazwa na nguvu za roho mtakatifu